um, wanted to answer your question about the practice test. When you print your codes for your kids, you will get um, practice code printouts and then real test printouts. I, the first year, have my kids actually type in and go to the practice test. I, I don't anymore. I take one of their codes, put it up on my screen, show them what it looks like. It's five or so questions. Uh, it's really not a content gaining experience. It's really more a how do how do you like in the fast test? How does this work? And so I just don't. It it just takes like ten minutes for my kids to all get their computers out, log in, and so I just do one and show it. So and those questions uh, the, don't even have anything to do with POE necessarily. Right, right. It's just kind of like bubble in the bubble in the circle. So the practice test is simply a fast test um, exam practice. It's not a POE practice at all. So um, if you want to print one, show the kids what you're doing. They're so savvy online that my kids don't even think twice about it. Yeah. So I had three kids. It's broken into two parts. And so I do first part day one, second part day two. It was 24 questions on the first day, 23 on the second day. And um, I had three kids who didn't stop. And so they started it, and so I just had to go seek their teachers and apologize because they had to stay and finish it. So, um, but it was, it was great. And, and honestly, I tested in middle May, and, and which may not be true for some of you guys, but I had my test scores back within 30 minutes. Usually pretty so, quick, yeah. Yeah, Every so I knew. Yeah. I had one kid who failed to submit. Like his score didn't come, didn't come, didn't come. And I have them always give me the little little uh, codes back. And so I just logged in like I was him, clicked submit, went about my business. So, yeah. um, I had a so problem is, it true, that. is it true that we can only give them 40 minutes per section? True. There's a, in well, the top like, right corner, there's a little countdown clock that tells oh, so them. Like stop them. them. I'm sorry? Does it like automatically stop them? Yeah, it turns off. Okay, because I'm going to give it tomorrow just to my seniors, though, because I still have some extra time with my other kids. Is that okay that I'm giving it to part of my kids and then another part? Yeah, I, I don't do that personally. I give it to everybody, seniors and yeah. all, because my seniors are my seniors are one to two weeks earlier than my other kids ending. We didn't have any snow days this year, so it was just one week. Um, I go ahead and do it for all because I've got them all ready for the final. And then that next week, my kids put together their presentations and then present their career presentations. So, oh, sorry, darkness. And so... Um, the uh, the seniors don't have to do those presentations, and the underclassmen mm -hmm. do, and that that really fills the rest of my time. But you're certainly welcome to um, my colleague who teaches IED. He does the senior finals, and then he does the other kids finals the typical day. It's about two weeks later. Okay. Um, I personally. Um, use Rochester Institute of Technology for my kids college credit option. Um, if you would like um, to get the contact, it's Deborah Cooper, if you would like to get her contact information from me, just email me and I can email you her contact information. The reason I like RIT is that kids can decide after they've gotten their exams for whether they want to pay for the credit or not. So. Um, it's $255 uh, for the credit. Uh, a 9 or an 8 gets them an A, a 7, a B, a 6, a C. And they have to have had 85% or higher in your course for the school year. So um, right. almost so. almost all my kids have access to it. I maybe have one or two kids a year who do it. I always tell the kids to check with the universities they're going to. Uh, for example, we have a lot of kids from here go to Iowa State, and Iowa State at their freshman orientation meeting for engineering students say, if you took POE, come down here and get this piece of paper. And so they go down, get it, um, they fax it to me, I then um, get my principal to confirm what score they had on it, I sign it, send it off, they get the credit for free. 
So check with the university and see some universities, Kansas University, you have to have IED and POE to kick off the intro to engineering class. Um, so, you know, but if you want to give that to your kids, go ahead and email me and I'll, I'll send that information out to you. <clears throat> with Rochester too, um, usually they, they give you, for every kid that registers, they give you some sort of like, I forget, it's five or ten bucks back or something to that effect to the school. So, we, questions? We, Question about college credit, anybody? Um, Trisha asked about a couple of things. One, the end of course review. If you guys go to my calendar, on May 2nd is my end of course review, and I did not have that clicked on there. Um, end of year kind of caught me, and I didn't get that on. But it's on there now. I put it on. Uh, so if you guys want to go to that, actually, Adam, can you give me the screen and I'll pull that up? Okay. Theoretically, you guys can see my screen. That little message was saying right there that June 1st, the new release of Canvas is coming out. <laughs> I'm trying to remain very calm right now. Okay. Um, Okay, so let me so this is what's coming up. That is not what golly, I hope that's not what I just sent clicked up there. Sorry, team. I just got Windows 10, a little gift, parting gift from the school year, and uh, I'm not very savvy in it. Oh, good news. Okay, so this is the review that I've got attached, and it is really just um, accumulation of stuff that was on the forum, stuff that it was released from really old exams. It's not even out there anymore. Uh, it's kids don't have room on this document to answer these questions. It's got a lot of verbiage on it. It's got uh, you know as far back as talk about engineering, engineering technology question 12 there. Uh, just kind of goes through so some of these. I just want them to go find them on their formula sheet. They can use the formula sheet. Anything that's highlighted in yellow. Um, I highlighted that for one of my peers. These were the changes that we made in it for this year's group. So anything that's in yellow, we added that based upon um, some feedback we got from our students and then information we got, just some forum sta statements that were made. I don't do the self-propelled car. And Trisha, I know you asked me about this and of course, review. Um, and the self-propelled car does a good job of talking about velocity. Uh, so, uh, average velocity, whereas the uh, launcher only really talks about initial velocity. So, that's why this, I added this question up here is the kids said that uh, they wish they'd known a little bit more about average velocity. And then, the kids said to me that there was a weird looking parallel circuit on the test. And so, I... This is a parallel circuit that I never see in our Project Lead the Way slides, but I do see in a lot of the physics books that I use. So I grabbed this one just so I could show them that this is also a parallel circuit. I have no idea if this is what it looked like or not. Uh, and that was two years ago as kids that, that told me that. So that is, again, attached on the uh, second of May. If anybody wants to use that, use it at your own risk, like always. There's no magic to it. It is the one that we use in our district, so please, please, please do not put anything online um, because I write most of the stuff for our entire district. 
It's uh, models of self-propelled cars. Tricia, I don't do that um, lab because I'm so tight on time at the end, and I love, love, love the launchers. So I, um, I, if you go online, there are a ton of like um, the different mousetrap cars. I used to do the mousetrap car activity, and I don't do it anymore. Um, again, just just because of time. Uh, I know yeah, Adam. I'm said, sorry. I may have asked about a self-propelled car, but what I really meant was the ping pong ball launcher. Oh, because great. they actually, in the write-up where you give them the ping pong ball launcher, it kind of says um, you've been shown a prototype and you need to improve it. And so my question is, mm. what prototype do you show them? Yeah. I don't show them any <clears throat> prototype. Here's. Yeah. Can you guys see pictures um, on my screen? I think I think that one's in reference to the Vex one because they're they're supposed to do oh, like, the Vex build yeah. and then they're supposed to modify it to make it work better. Right. I don't use the Vex ones. Can you guys see a picture of a of a launcher on my screen? Yeah. Okay. These are yeah. uh, my kids really pumped up the pneumatic. I guess pun intended. Pumped up the pneumatic this year, so I have a lot of pneumatic launchers. This is one of them. This was a pneumatic launcher. This is not. This is just a bungee cord fed. That one has a spring. This one actually in here, the, the ping pong ball sits here and they pull it back. It's kind of got an arm that pulls back and then kind of whacks it and then this is how they control the angle. Uh, again, pneumatic. This one just had um, really kind of medical tubing was what they used for their elastic. This one was made of a plastic spoon, cardboard, and a lot of tape and some rubber bands. This one had um, bungee cords that were the spring mechanism, and I don't know if you can see it, but that's kind of the stopper they pulled down. Uh, that one, I think, was spring-fed. This one has, it's, it is bungee cord-fed, but you'll see there's a PVC and a PVC pipe, and then they put the ball there. Uh, this one had, a, had a, like, the stretchy material that you use, like, when you go to a therapist. Like, that was their mechanism. This was spring-fed. This one is rubber band fed. It's very much a slingshot. Uh, this one was spring fed. This one was rubber band fed, how they launched that one. This one was rubber band fed. This one was incredibly accurate, and it was kind of a new design. Uh, these dowels is how they controlled the angle. They had markings on it. It's what ang how far up is what angle it was at. And then literally this is just a little wooden box they got at Hobby Lobby, and these are just rubber bands that they pulled back. Pneumatic, uh, spring-fed, pneumatic. So those are mine. The other thing is that um, I do, and I totally got this from uh, Matt Hudson, is my kids sit, we have a big atrium that's two stories high, and so I take 15 feet and measure off a diameter of 15 feet and then make um, 12 markings around a circle. And so the group next to them has a 12 inch by 18 inch piece of paper we call the launching pad. And then they are therefore about two and a half feet away. And then the group directly across the circle is 15 feet away. And so they have to show me that their launcher will do both short and long. And I don't explain. They know that they have to be able to go between um, two and a half feet and 15 feet. And they have to be able to do that by an initial velocity that's constant and then an angle. Uh, between, I have my kids do between 20 and 80, and then also 45, um, and I, they know they're going to do that. So I let them all find their spots, and then I say, in order to prove to me that you can hit a long, you have to attack the person directly across from you. In order to show me that you can hit a short, you have to attack the person on either side of you. Um, and, in, and the only way you're going to get that um, point for a hitting both short and long, which I call the functionality in the rubric, um, is that you hit them or that you could have hit them, but your aim was just a little off. So um, they just go around in the circle, and you are either under attack or you're ready to go. And we can get about 20 launches per kid in a 50-minute class period because they really want to attack each other. Um, if you get hit three times, you're out. So you pull your launch pad back and you're just watching. If Often the kids that get out go start a new circle somewhere. Uh, but if you stay in then every, every time you hit the person you said you're going to hit, you get a bonus point. 
Um, so that, and I guarantee them two launches before they're out because they have to show me a short and a long. It, I used to do the can you hit this target and people weren't very involved, but um, it, you know, launching things with each other, kids love that. So uh, it's super, it's like one of the favorite things, like kids come down and watch and it's kind of a big deal. So, and it's great to have your final activity be super fun because the <laughs> marble sorters got her big exhausted, so that's kind of cool. So, um, Trisha, does that answer your question about what it meant with the model? I think Adam's right. I think I've taken that out because I think that's the VEX model, and I have my kids use just as you saw products. Okay. And then how long do you give them to build it? You had said that they build it at home, but how long do they build? Um, I give it to them with two weekends of time, and then they have one class period to play with it and start to gather data, and then another class period to finish gathering the data and um, calculate that spreadsheet that they have of all the ranges. Yeah, I usually give them about um, <clears throat> about a month. You know, give them time to they can schedule together. And then, I, then I let them if they want to. You know, work after school or something to that effect is fine. Right. Um, but you know, a lot of them will get together and in groups and work on it with you know their neighbor, their grandfather, somebody that you know has some tools and some know-how. Um, and you get some really creative ones, and you get some ones that you could tell that they had cardboard and tape, and that's about it. <laughs> and, and rubber bands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's it is important though the, for the homemade ones that they they're they're actual launchers. They're not like catapult style right. because you have to be able to to adjust that angle. And with a catapult, it, it's not quite the same thing. You know, if I kids bring this just like a big spoon and try to launch it, it's like yeah, it's gonna flick it, but it's not going to be accurate. You can't really calculate the angle on that. Right. The kid that I said had cardboard and a spoon, they actually, theirs was like a catapult, but they rigged theirs to shoot exactly at the horizon, and then they lifted and lowered their uh, the front of it to get an angle launch. And I tell them, if you're going to use try and use like a trebuchet or a catapult, you have to come show me the math. Because our kinematic equations don't work with that. And then the kinematics, and I'll show you this in a PowerPoint here in a minute, the kinematics that we work with um, are based upon a range that's at the same height as the initial launch. So I try and tell them also to make it launch as low to the ground as it can for their ping pong ball to start. Those are the only questions that I had. Does anybody want to throw one out before I show you a little PowerPoint? All good? Okay, so this is the um, projectile motion PowerPoint. <laughs> it's uh, very, got a lot of cartoon going on in it. If your kids do not have those three words mastered, speed, velocity, and acceleration, make sure that they do. If you have any kids that are older and have taken physics, they'll understand the distinction between that. Certainly, calc kids will understand that if you have any kids that are old enough to be in calc. But they need to get these words, understand that, and we've used speed and velocity when we introduce vectors. We talked about the fact that velocity was a vector because it showed not only magnitude but direction. Speed does not. And those, those words get interchanged in the English language often, normally because we don't usually keep track of how fast we're going backwards. So physics kids will need to really delineate between those. And then acceleration, it's the change in velocity. So gravity, this a gravitational acceleration, a negative 9.8 meters per second squared and negative 32 feet per second squared. I use feet with my kids because our tiles are a foot square. So it's easy for them when they're um, gathering data to launch it, know what square it landed in, and then where in that square it landed. So that's all they really have to worry about is where in that square it landed and just count how far away it was. I will tell you that this negative 32 is the one that I commonly use, but the formula sheets that your kids can use has negative 32... 0.15, I believe? One, no, it's new this year. Adam, oh, it's even different. Um, it was, it's different than what it was before. 
So I had some kids work out some open-ended questions. I was like, where did they get that number? And then I looked on their formula sheet, and that's where they got it. So you might check over your formula sheets just to notice what that is. I tell my kids I'm going to follow their lead. If they use negative 32 feet per second squared on their open-ended work, I'll follow that. If they use what's on the um, formula sheet, I'll follow that. But just heads up, that's a, that's a little, it's different than what they see here. Now, I will tell you that we make sure when we are writing the end of course exam questions that we don't let rounding affect the selection of the answer choice. So it would probably say round to the nearest integer anyway, so it probably wouldn't matter. And then just talking about, you know, acceleration, how acceleration over time. Now, this gentleman is dropping, so gravity is actually a benefit to us. So it is accelerating what we're doing, but notice if I go back a slide, it said that it was negative 32 feet per second squared. That's because we are going to launch something up in the air. So gravity is actually working against what we're trying to do. So it's negative, it's a deceleration versus an acceleration. Whereas here, because he's dropping, gravity is an acceleration. So I think that's important, and I'll show you why here in a second, because the formula has the opposite of g, and so you got to be careful because we're doing some square roots, and negatives and square roots are always a problem. So here's the projectile stuff. And I talked to the kids about the fact that two of the largest industries in the world are based on projectiles. And at this point, the kids will, will get defense, like, so weapons, the whole military, that whole thing, and certainly um, anything that's a weapon has a projectile that we are concerned about, you know, how far it goes, where it lands up, you know, no one wants the, the missile that they launched to come straight back down. So, certainly that, but then uh, the other one, if anybody has bought, bought a golf club, Lately, you know that those babies can be $200, $300, and that's because that golf club, you don't just carry one of those around, you carry lots of them around. And so based upon the angle or based upon the weight that that um, golf club is, um, depends on when I want to use it. And so sports, certainly if you have purchased um, soccer shoes or a bat or a racket of any kind, you know that projectile is a big deal, how, you know, people talk about hang time in a football, right? So um, projectile is a great, great big industry. It's good for them to understand the application of that. So theta, they've probably seen theta before when you're talking vectors. Initial velocity, some books will use V sub zero instead of V sub I. So just, you know, make sure the kids are aware of that. Notice that what we're going to talk about, we're going to use a version of the one of the three kinematics, and so kinematic equations. And so it is based upon the angle from the horizon. So that's what Adam and I were talking about. You need to be really careful when your kids are making launchers that they're actually making launchers, not trebuchets or catapults. So it shows here that it takes you know, four seconds to go up, which means it takes four seconds to go down. You have a conversation about the fact that you really can't change directions without stopping. Um, I often have a kid try and walk forward and then walk backwards without stopping at the end. And so um, they find that it's impossible to do so. And the fact is that when you're at the apex of that, then you're going to have a moment where the velocity was zero. So you actually stop. Slow down, slow down, stop, and then on the way back down, you get faster and faster and faster. So if we didn't have any gravity affecting us, we would just go out, but because of gravity, we pulled down. So this is a modification of the kinematic. This is not the kinematic that is on their formula sheet, and so... Uh, you just have to be really careful. Your kids are going to have the x equal formula on their formula sheet, and so they have to be able to manipulate it. So I spend some time making sure the kids can get from the x equals equation into the velocity equals equation, which is literal equations are always super hard for them. So you might want to spend some time with that. But notice that this formula says we're going to take the opposite of g. Now, gravitational acceleration, remember we said we're launching something up, so gravity is working against our upward motion, so it's negative 32 
And then this formula says take the opposite of that because we need to have a positive numerator there. Um, the sine of our angle is always going to be positive. And so that this will throw them. So they'll want to make it negative 32 because of that negative, but it's really the opposite of 32. So this is an important formula because your kids are going to have to figure out what the initial velocity is of their mechanism. And as I tell the kids, you are not allowed to alter the velocity. You are only allowed to alter the angle to control your distance. This is the formula, the version of the formula that um, is on your formula sheet. So it's the only one that's there, so make sure your kids are savvy at either isolating for initial velocity or isolating for the angle. Two things that are hard for them, it includes a sine inverse, but this is to calculate the range. You know, given the velocity I just figured out, and in the activity, the kids will say, given the velocity I just figured out, how far do I believe the calculated range should be? And then they'll also do actually trial runs with it and see if they actually come up with that. And then here is isolating the angle at which they're going to be. So, so it's pretty quick. Uh, the thing that I don't think it does a great job of is I don't think it does a great job of having the kids talk about average velocity. So if you're not doing the self-propelled car, make sure that you create some average velocity problems where the kids talk about velocity being the change in distance over the change in time. Because in our launcher activity, they're always initial velocity. So um, questions for me on that? So the initial velocity is not zero. It's zero before it launches. But as soon as it launches, it's something else. Right, and they need to make sure that they can make that as consistent as possible. I tell my kids that they need to probably have like a cotter pin or a release clip or something that allows them to always, always have um, the most consistent velocity because everything is based upon the fact that they have an initial velocity. So they take their launcher and they launch it 10 times at 30 degrees and calculate their initial velocity from that. And th those 10 shots should be really consistent. And I tell my kids that first day, they get two class days to gather data and one class day for competition. And usually that first class day, they think they're ready to go. And they find out when they go to do those 10 shots that their ball is everywhere. And that means they have to tidy up their mechanism so that it consistently launches with initial velocity. And they need to be, in my opinion, within the same tile same foot by foot tile if every time in order, unless it's just kind of a misfire, which is an outlier and they should disregard it anyway. My kids love this. Like the, they, my old kids come back and ask when we're going to do it so that they can come watch it. So They love um, shooting the ping pongs. Not necessarily the math part of it, but <laughs> shooting around and hitting each other is always fun. Yeah, exactly. I tell the kids when I, I train in Colorado Springs and um, the, uh, my master teacher came in and said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to build a ping pong ball launcher and so you guys design it and as soon as you have it designed, you go down to the shop and you can start making it. By the way, you don't make them anymore. You make a Vex one in training now. But um, like there are markers hanging in the air. The men in my class just shot out of the room down to the lab and, I'm, and I drew mine up and went down. He's like, did you guys know we were doing this or how did you already have done? And one guy was like, I've been dreaming of this since I was five. <laughs> and so, I mean, there are kids, and I tell my kids up front, there can't be any combustion or any electricity. So no motors and no combustion because everybody wants to make a potato, potato launcher. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Our chemistry kids make potato launchers, so it's all the kids know how to make them. And uh, I don't want any explosions. So, and I also... I give the kids each ping pong ball and tell them they owe me a ping pong ball back and warn them that they're probably going to crush two or three of them. So I just get them back. I write POE on it and then it, it comes back without my handwriting or blank because they bought it. But I, I acquire a lot of ping pong balls because the kids who don't have ping pong tables will bring me like a box yeah. of them. So I've got a ton of ping pong balls. Anybody else? Okay. Um, I gave my end of course exam. Um, my kids thought it was super fair. The questions that I saw I thought were super fair. 
uh, time was not an issue. I usually have my kids who are on IEPs try not to use their extended time just because it's easier for RIT to give them college credit if it's not a modified score and so modified testing time and so um, both my kids who are on extended time took it in the regular time and got passable scores. One got a nine, one got a seven. So, um, so I felt like the time was appropriate. Um, you, they, they come up, many of the computers come up in the same order, so you want to make sure your kids are spaced far enough apart that if you are worried about wondering eyes that you have them so that that's not an issue. I was shocked to look from the back of the room and see like over half the class on the same question. Now, they start jumping around and so that shakes itself up, but probably the first two or three questions, it was pretty consistent that a lot of people had the same ones come up. Hmm. Michael, you have a good question there. To <clears throat> You're reviewing old, older tests, I guess. Um, when, when they, you know, go over the EOC, a lot of time is spent on trying to um, get the amount of questions that they have accomplished in the amount of time that we have within that 40, you know, 45 minute, like, block or time that you would have to teach. Um, and a lot of students are always like, we're going to spend two hours or all my time just studying trust calcs. Uh, and then I always have to remind the students that, well, that's only one component. And the kids would never have to solve an entire trust calc. They just, they, they wouldn't have enough time. Um, we, when we write the questions, we are, we are told that we, it has to be completed in 90 seconds or less. And so when I write the question, I then review two to three other people's questions. And one of the things that we do is time ourselves in how long it takes us to, to take that question. So if that question takes, we, we document how long that takes. So um, if a question takes me, in my opinion, 45 seconds or more, then it's probably too long. And so we pay a lot of attention in the writing of the exam questions in the length of them. And I've written some trust questions, and it is tricky because mm -hmm. you can, I mean, you're, I say to them, you're definitely not getting full trust because, which is, and they're like, shoo, and I'm like, yeah. well, there's some pros and cons to that because now you have to walk into the question where the other person has set it up. And so sometimes they figure out just a piece of it. Sometimes it's started and they have to continue it. And it's, I mean, it's artful to do those, but um, 90 seconds. I tell the kids when they're taking it, if you spend more than 90 seconds on a question, move on. You know, you, you are, you're stuck. Did you get that question, Adam? Yeah. The um, as far as you know, offering the the test. If you're on a block schedule and you can offer the test the entire time, um, I've done that in the past, and I and I just recently switched to doing it over the course of two days, and, and I think my students have done better, you know, during the testing phase of it because of that, because they're not as stressed. They get a little chunk. They either go, oh, that was easy, I got this, or they go, holy crap, I need to go study. So it, it encourages them to kind of go back and look over things and then, you know, gives them time the next day to, to finish that up. Um, so I wouldn't recommend doing the whole thing in one day unless you are, you know, crunched for time, you don't have a choice. And at the end, uh, I, I, the second time was much more explicit at, Question 24, you need to call me over when you have finished question 24 um, because the first kid that went on is kind of an idiot and, <laughs> and the world is against him. Like he never knows why things don't work when he's involved and it's because he can't follow instructions to save his soul. Stop sign there. So, yeah, so he went on to the next part and I was just like, ah, Addison. And then I had two like complete rule followers who said they were clicking in the middle and the question came up and they must have clicked past it. So my second class, I was like, when you finish question 24, stop. Don't touch anything else until I come over. And then I still don't know how they did it because you have to answer like four questions. Are you done? Do you sure you're done? Really, are you done? And I don't know how they went on, but two of my kids were super good rule followers and still managed to go on. So I, it, I do believe that it's easier than it seems. But um, 24, the first part, 23 the second part. 
And I've always had to do mine in two parts because I only have traditional day classes yeah. at the time that I'm administering the test. I think it's a lot less stress um, for them, you know. I agree. I, I actually just, like, tried to register my kids for the test, like, right now. And then there's a screen that said, um, you know, do you need to add or drop any students? Because we had students in there who dropped at the very beginning of my semester. And so I clicked on remove those students, and now my entire system is froze. So if anybody, so I don't know what I'm going to do. We have to give it tomorrow, but, um, and I can't get a hold of anybody right now because it's after school, but right. anybody else is in that boat, maybe you don't want to click that because. Yeah, what I, yeah. what I always recommend when you're doing the EOC and you start to get to that point where you're registering your students, you know, obviously it's your first time through, but give yourself a week or so for grace period. If you do have to drop students, it has to be approved by whoever's the principal on your account, whoever's like the administrator on your account. Uh, if you're that person, then you just approve and it's not a big deal. But if it's somebody down the line, you have to get in contact with them in order to figure that out. Um, I typically only worry about adding students. Uh, as far as I know, it doesn't hurt to, to leave them in there. I mean, I don't care if you have any problems with that. I, I just leave them in there if, if they're extra. Uh, I I drop mine, but I we don't. The only reason, the only way we use our LMS is for the testing. Um, we're actually not permitted. I have to use the grade program for the school, and I have to use the website from the school. So if I was to use LMS, I would duplicate everything I do. So I don't. So um, the only way reason we activate the LMS is to do this test. And so our LMS isn't actually set up the kids' names and numbers aren't put in until like nine weeks in, which is another reason I can't use it is because nine weeks are gone before I can get yeah. into it. Um, but I always, they, third, about beginning of fourth quarter, he says, do you have anybody else that's there? I say the fourth quarter, but like Adam, if I have kids who move or drop after that, I, I just leave them. <laughs> I, it's, yeah. it, I, I, especially this close. I wouldn't mess with them. I just worry about it. I just want everybody to have a ticket. Yeah. And then, you know, both parts of the EOC, I, you know, that I'm not 100% sure if they're all units are covered in both parts. I don't, I don't know that answer. Um, yeah, it is. Um, it's not like you do units one and two day one and three and four day two. Um, I, I don't stand over a kid and read the question yeah. because I, I, it would freak me out if I was a kid and like my teacher was like right here. Um, I recognize seven of the questions that I had written, so I obviously know what those are. Um, and then just from the picture, I could kind of get a gist of, oh, this is, you know, some kind of force or this is, you know, structural or, it's, oh, that's a stress-strain curve or, oh, that's a, you know, flow chart or whatever. And so I could from that tell, but there were programming questions on both day. I know there were um, statics questions on both days electricity questions on both days. So um, I think it was pretty mixed. I think it's um, I think it's the art of timing it. I think that the 40 minutes is the master keeper of that and how they distribute that is then to, to puzzle puzzle piece those times together. But I thought it was pretty mixed. The, I didn't have any kids who said and I said I say to them when I'm writing questions this year, I didn't write any level one or two questions. All my questions were level three and level four. And when we get assigned a level four question, it specifically says you are writing a question that the student has never seen before. So you are putting what they know in a way they've not seen, and they have to apply it. Mm -hmm. And I tell the kids, you know, I wrote five questions this year, and four of them were level four questions. So. I then, as the author of that, can't use anything that they've seen. So I have to make sure that I add just a little bit more or ask them a question in a way that makes them think, put together all the pieces they've seen. And so I'm pretty honest about the fact that if your kids have taken an AP test, you know, this is, they try and be as free response with the questions they have being multiple choice. And I, when I write a distractor, so I'm assigned a question, I write that question, I have to write a little paragraph statement as to how I came up with my answer. 
And then every distractor that I write, the other three distractors that I write, I have to write a paragraph defending why I made that distractor. So my distractors take as much time, as, actually I'm quicker with the right answer, my distractors take me more time. And so the distractors on this test, one of the things we are reviewed on is the validity of the distractor. And so this, uh, it takes me a couple of hours to write each question. So I am way more thoughtful on what words, keywords I'm using, whether it's level one, two, three, or four, um, than I am on anything else. So I tell the kids they're going to be great distractors. They're going to be, um, if you spend not more than 90 seconds, then, you know, if you've spent a couple minutes on this problem, move on. Because you're not, what's sad is not to answer the last four questions that you knew because you got stuck on a question and it stayed there. Um, my kids all had the ability, when they're taking the test, it'll have all 24 questions on the top, and then as they finish them, it boxes them in, and if they, it puts an X if you've been there but haven't finished it. And so they can tell from that, just a screen, what questions they've answered and what questions they've seen and not answered and what questions they haven't seen yet. And so um, uh, it's, it's fair, but it's hard. I mean, it should be, because they can get college credit for it. So, I mean, they can get an A if they have an 8 or a 9 for Rochester. So, 3% um, of the nation gets a 9. Anybody else? Um, scores qualify your credit at Rochester an eight, if you have an 85% in your POE class and then you have an 8 or a 9, that gets you an A, a 7 gets you a B, and a 6 gets you a C, and they won't go any lower than a 6. And, and again, it all depends on which university, because there's, you know, at least 20 or 30 uh, or more that would honor some sort of credit. It depends on which state you're in, where the student's going. Um, some have a cost with them, um, like I know University of Kentucky doesn't have a cost with it, but um, Will that student go to Kentucky, or are they going somewhere else? And will it transfer? Is always the question. Yeah, I I just I choose RIT because my kids can make that choice after they've seen their score, which is a gift that you don't have to sign it before and then bank it on that. Um, it transferred to all the universities around here. I called all the universities, and it transferred. They've just been lovely to work with. So, um, but I, it's the only school I've worked with. So. Uh, I don't know the other schools, and a lot, like I said, a lot of my kids just get credit from wherever they are. I honestly don't think there, I, if my own daughter um, will take POE next year, and my recommendation for her will be to go take her intro to engineering class at whatever university she goes to. I think it's a good opportunity to meet people. I think it's a good opportunity to meet the staff at the university to find out if there's a staff member who has a great grant or what are the clubs. And so I think that taking that intro engineering class is a good idea. So my own child, I'll ask her to take that. But, you know, teach their own on all of that. Is everybody okay? Is the audio figured out? Yeah, it's not on yeah, our it's side. it's working. I think we're just overwhelmed. It'd be a shame if Adam and I... Hear you. It's just a big world tire. I can hear you. Okay, great. It's just exhausted, waiting for the end of the school year. <laughs> nice, a nine, Miguel. You should be training us then. Um, I tell the kids... I could tell you Go so ahead. much this year. No, I was just telling you, I learned so, so much this year. It's incredible. <laughs> That's good. It, it should be uh, invigorating. It should be... For, for me, at least, it, it usually... Uh, interests me more and it keeps me excited, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the breakdown on the stay nine is that 3% of the nation gets a nine, 14% of the nation gets an eight, 
um, six percent of the nation gets a seven, fifteen percent gets a fifteen uh, gets a six, twelve percent gets a five, sixteen percent gets a four, seventeen percent gets a three, twelve percent gets a two, and one percent or five percent gets a one. And if you go into the assessment, they have some documentation that will give you all that. Um, I personally use it as my final exam score um, and then hold my kids accountable. So um, I convert that. If you got a 9, I give you 100% on the final. Mm -hmm. If you got an 8, I give you a 97% because 3% of the nation got 9, so I assume that those that you got the highest 8 you could get, so I give you the benefit of the doubt that there are 3% of the score above you, and so I give those folks a 97 and then I work down so that then a 7 is an 83, and I just take those percentages from the C 9s and go down. That's my own personal use, and I can defend that to my kids and their parents. Um, but you work with that. It used to be we could tell their percentage. <laughs> that was a little easier because you could say, oh, I can take that data and kind of get an average of my own personal kids and give them a score accordingly. But um, I think the best way for a kid to blow off a test is tell them that you're not documenting it. And so um, this doesn't count. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. There was funny. We were at a meeting years ago, and they were talking about, well, it's not valid if you break into two days. And then the next sentence, they said, yeah, but I wouldn't give it for a grade. And I said, well, you want it to not be valid. Tell these children that yeah. it doesn't count for anything. So um, my kids know that it's their end of their final exam. And I guess if if they, I have always found that it's really appropriate their grade really matches how they did on it. Well, I'm panicking because uh, in my district, is tw the, um, um, the test is 20% of their final grade, and I didn't get to cover everything. I haven't got to 4.2 yet, and I need to test them on Tuesday. Days. So I'm feeling horrible. To, I feel very bad that they just didn't see everything, and it's 20% of their grade. Well, well project lead the way will say that on a first year teacher, you're not going to get 100% of the of the content in. Adam, can you remember? It's like 85% or something like that. I, I mean, you're lucky, I think. Yeah, to get there. So the fact that you only missed four two, rock on, sister, because yeah. that's that's really that's flying uh, for a first year. So um, I would, if I were you, um, skew their scores accordingly. You know. I take your greatest yeah. kids and see what scores they got, and then react accordingly and and give them points. The curve that. isn't isn't unreasonable for this, based off of right. not covering all the content. Plus, with with the four two, um, <clears throat> you know, quite often what's done is a lot of people just don't have time to do that project, so they skip the project and do the content. It's not mm -hmm. the most interesting way of doing the content. Obviously, it's boring. It's a little bit drier. But if you only have two days. You right. could get across the kinematic stuff in two days for the content that they need to know. Yeah, that PowerPoint takes like 15 minutes. And so if you can just create some data for them to crunch, you know, say, given this angle with this velocity, what's the range? Given this range with this velocity, what's the angle? You know, and then make sure that they know what average velocity is and initial velocity, um, how, you know, what is... Ex velocity, speed, and acceleration. I mean, I think you could kick that off in a day if you really just wanted them to touch base on it. And it won't be more than a question or two, to be honest. Anybody else? Um, I'm assuming that some of you are going to summer trainings. Is that true? Do you guys still yes. go to that? July. Okay. Adam, where are you teaching? Yeah. I'll be in Northwestern State University of Louisiana, West Virginia U, and Bucknell in Pennsylvania. Um, I'm at Oklahoma State and Georgia Southern. If you haven't signed up, pick Georgia Southern because that class is barely making it. And yeah. I want to make sure I go because I love Savannah. So, um, but if you guys haven't signed up, get, get your district to get you signed up. Quickly. Oh, San Diego. I would love to go to that one. That one. Yeah. I have never even gotten a glimpse of that one. Someday, maybe. <laughs> Jennifer, I guess. Um, I always do. I'm sorry. Yeah. Jennifer, are you back with us? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. 
if you're out there. Uh, the one yeah. of the questions that was asked, and this was asked before, and I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but the is if there's a certificate of completion for this. I think some people need it to show proof for their school district. Um, we don't have anything, but I can contact the people at, at Project Lead the Way and see what um, if they have something that they can send over to you. Okay. Well. By well, California trains, it looks like. Sunny oh. State. So Jennifer, it says a, a letter from us. Adam, do you want to contact them and see if they have a kind of a certificate that yeah. we can make available? Yeah. I'll email uh, somebody <laughs> and see what they say. I don't know. I know. I was thinking about all the names I know. I don't know who we would contact, but. I'm sure somebody will tell us which direction to go. So we'll, we'll get back to you on that one. Yeah. And then if, if we get wanna, that. Sorry, go ahead. I just wanted to echo the thank yous to get through this year. I, I refer to this as my support group. I, I have two of them, a POE and an IED support group, which uh, kind of gets you through the, the next two weeks. And I, 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 somewhere in the fall, I wasn't actually sure how I was going to make it. But somehow, we in fact did make it. Our class ends in another two weeks. So. Um, Thank you for all of your help. Thank you for sharing the resources that you shared. Um, I really appreciate that. This has been a really challenging first year. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you deserve a break. Yeah. It's yeah. so funny. You guys are going to go to training, and you're just going to be rock stars. You're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I can do that. I love it when I have people who have already done the curriculum in my trainings because they become my uh, leaders. Do you know how you long it takes of quitting for a couple times a year? Trisha, why don't you go and then Griselda will have you go. Trisha, what was your question? Mine was off topic. She might want to go first. Griselda, what do you have? Oh, mine was off topic too. I was just saying that I, I thought <laughs> of quitting a couple of times you. throughout year because I felt so overwhelmed. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, wow. Well, it is super overwhelming. I, I think that for some of you guys that are new, it's overwhelming. I know I had taught um, for 16 years when I took this on, and it was hard for me to allow myself to be new at something because I had kids in my calc class and my engineering class, and so there was a little of a curse to be like, I think you get to a point where you don't allow yourself to struggle, and so uh, it was. it's overwhelming the first year for everyone, no matter how much experience they have and what they already know. Okay. Well, Adam and I are both available um, through our email if you have other questions, and Adam will let us know what he finds out about certificates. Um, I start training session one, so I will be training, uh, I guess we start June 6th. Um, I am, thankfully, I was done last Friday, so I'm sitting up in a very empty school right now, me and the custodians, because there's nobody around here at all. Um, so uh, we um, just, you know, I'll be with it. I always have my email, so uh, let us know if you need anything. We can still get you through. And then once you order VEX, how long before they come? Days. Will, like, big buy? Pretty quick. Days. Yeah, like, so if I order, like, a whole new VEX system, it'll just come immediately. Right. It's okay. shot now. They were backlogged on motors. Uh, when I ordered my motors, they they came like five at a time over two weeks. So they're backlogged on motors, but everything like it was almost like Amazon Prime. Like two days later, the custodians are bringing in boxes that I did not want <laughs> yet. I wanted them to come at the end of the school year, um, and I got them like within. So the first boxes arrived two days after I ordered them. So. Right. We're ditching our Fisher tech, 
and we're going to order the whole new VEC system. And so um, I think it's like $10,000 to do all of that. And I, I think I'm just going to order the whole system. Any advice? You had sent me kind of an abbreviated list of what to do, but how much time should I plan on the front end of unpacking and organizing everything? I personally yeah. did that on my own slash my mom, my dad, yeah. my niece, my daughter, and my husband and I did that. Um, and so it, it all depends on, on your wherewithal. I, I didn't want to use any class time for that. Um, my colleagues both used three school days just to unbox everything, have a huge recycling bin because everything comes in little boxes. Mm -hmm. um, it's not and the hardest not thing, like, really. yeah. Right now, my, it wasn't hard for me to do my last set because I knew where everything went. Um, the first time I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this part, and I don't know what I'm going to do with this part, and should I put these parts in the same drawer? I don't know. And so the first time, it's kind of like, you know, when you move into a new house, you know where everything goes. Um, so do you have a picture of your setup? Because I have, um, I have kind of like these bins for the Fisher Tech. Should I like take the Fisher Tech out and put the other one back in? Do you have a picture of how you organized it? Um, can you see me right now? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go. Oops. Sorry. Did she go away? <laughs> can anybody else hear her? Because she got up, she froze her screen. <laughs> my sonars and my light sensors, and you'll notice that, I don't know if you can see this on the front, I have a picture of what they are. So like this store has my axles in it. Um, my pride and joy is this great big new toolbox. I just got that monster right there. Um, but those are my, um, those are my smart parts. My wheels are all in a big tub, and my gears are all in a big tub. My, um, so I, I had a really wise master teacher who said the more, the more you specific you get, oops, the more specific you get with, um, oh, I just think I went away. So I don't know. If, okay, can you still hear me though? Yeah. I can hear you. Okay, well, I don't know. I think I'm, oh, I'm back. Um, it's, it doesn't like walking. Um, the more specific you are in parts, the more parts you're going to have not in the right spot. So I have my metal parts in the bottom of that drawer. I have a drawer for base plates. I have a drawer for one bias. They're the parts you can bend. That's the only part in my in my world that you can damage. I have a part, a drawer for long metal parts, and then all my sensors are in that those drawers you just saw. But the wheels, the gears, I have. Um, Hobby Lobby beading boxes, they look like tackle boxes basically where I have my screws, my nuts, my um, little gussets, my little plastic spacers. So that's mine. Um, Adam has a much more organized system than I do. Anal retentive is better. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it just, it kind of depends what you want to live with. I have um, colleagues who put a kit in um, a portable toolbox. I, I don't do that um, because I don't have anywhere to put all those portable toolboxes. So um, I just got a grant to get that massive um, toolbox, which I'm super excited about um, because I added a POE class next year. But yeah. um, it'll take you some while, but make sure it's something that you can live with and you can sort. And those metal parts are super heavy, so be respectful mm -hmm. of the fact that you put base plates in a drawer, it's likely to tip something over. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with, with any of the VEX storage is that you have a system for um, maintaining the quantity. You know, you know how many motors are left over and that type of stuff because I, they'll just walk away. And I don't even think it's kids are stealing them. They just disappear and and uh, so for me it's like every time check in check out I'm you know that aspect I'm anal a lot of other things I'm not but you know it's, it's expensive yeah. stuff so yeah I did same you get your test bed um, you come with a sh I have my kids all bring a reusable uh, grocery bag like a Trader Joe's or Walmart or wherever reusable grocery bag 
and I tell them the weirder it looks, the better, because then they can find theirs. And so, like, when we're doing our test bed, they go shopping. And, you know, I have laid out 24 393 motors, 24 269 motors, and so everybody gets their deal. And then my leftovers, I'll, I'll give each of them um, one more motor. They each get three motors for their, um, for their sorters. But they then, the day that we put that all back in, when they take their stuff apart, I come around and say, I'm coming around with the tub to pick up your motors. And I come and pick up all of the motors. And so I check them out, check them in. I do that with the marbles, too. Like, I give them a bag of marbles, <laughs> and I say, any marble that's lost, you owe me a buck. Yeah. And um, I, I, use, I lose about two a year because of that. And they, like, freak out when they drop them and look for them. Otherwise, they wouldn't. So yeah, I used to use, lose masses of them. But... Thank you. You're welcome. That's Mr. Adam. <laughs> Sorry, that was my daughter. She knows you guys by name. <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> Can you tell them, thanks for helping my mommy. Tell them, who did I have my mommy? There you go. Uh, You're welcome. welcome. <laughs> yeah, she knows you guys by name. Um, yeah, but thank you, probably as your most needy student. I really do appreciate you guys. So. No, I think I was the most needy student. So. <laughs> we all win. It's, it's been tough. We all win. It's been tough. All right. Well, she's gazing at you, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anytime, yeah, feel free. Keep okay. asking questions. As and my, uh, my, that, the website that you guys have for me this year, we're keeping it for next year. We like to change software as much as possible so that nobody feels really comfortable in anything at my school district, but we're going to keep that for one more year. So... Um, just like you guys can go back to 2015, you guys can go back to 2016, and then all you have access to will be the exact same address to what I'm doing next year. So you guys certainly have access. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. No problem. All right. Well, you have a good summer. Thank you for all your help. Enjoy your training. And um, put yourself on the list to come to San Diego. It's lovely here. Uh, well, I got to tell you, that list is a lucky few. We tried to do that, and we tried to go to Hawaii. It just doesn't work. <laughs> ah, that would be another nice one. Yeah. Very amazing. good. Thank you. Thank you, Trish. Good luck. Bye-bye. Jennifer is asking me uh, questions about um, the programming in Robot C. Um, and the answer keys for the activities, have you used them at all, Karen? Like the uh, three one to three one six? I haven't. Yeah, she, yeah she's yeah. asking. No, and I uh, the um, I think I sent you guys all the um, outline that I used to check it. Mm -hmm. That for me is how I keep track of that. Because um, my kids get in different spots and it becomes like kind of a nightmare to keep track of. Um, personally, this year I, the uh, Indianapolis conference was when I was supposed to be checking those, so I came back and had to check like six of them for each kid. Um, and I've never used those. I mean, it it, I, it works or it doesn't. So, yeah, sorry, I've not used those at all. Yeah, I mean, to to my knowledge, they're they're all pretty accurate. I would assume. Um, there may be a typo or two here or there. Yeah, and if you get stuck on a code, if you copy it and send it, we can usually um, I tell you where the error is. Yeah. Um, can you hear me at all now? Is this Jennifer then? Yes. Yep. Yes. Can you hear me? Yep. Uh-huh. I can hear you. Okay. I think I found what my problem was with the audio. Um, I was using those to, I'm not, this will be my second through, time through with the programming. And the first time through, I had a TA who had done all of the curriculum. And so she was really the backbone of a lot of things in the class. But this time, I'm just, it's just me. And after, and I had also been to training. And so I was a little bit more confident, but I still like having the answer keys there because if there's a line of code not working, I don't quite know how to go get it on my own yet. Yeah. And so the answer keys were were helpful. But as I was checking them against what some of the students had done, it, they're just 
as they got further on, it just didn't, didn't seem to match. And so I was wondering, are the students able to go out and find these answer keys on Google? Um, yeah. Oh, God, probably. Yeah. Um, I will tell you that I have, when I'm walking around and grading some of those, um, uh, especially on the more advanced ones where they get to make some real choices, yeah. um, they'll look different just because they thought about it in different ways. They mm. use different commands to make the same thing happen. So there are, um, I, I, you know, when I sit down to a kid's code, I say, okay, let me tell you what I think is happening here, and I'll talk through it. Um, and it'll surprise me. I'll sit down at four different groups and have four completely different ways of, of doing that. So, um, you know, and so um, the the farther you the, you get into the three one to the towards three one six, the the more opportunity they have. Because a lot of those first ones, they're literally copying and pasting. And I won't let my kids copy and paste. I make them type it or drag and drop it. Um, when my kids were cutting and pasting it, they had no idea what they were doing. I, it was it, they yeah. had no. Copy. And so it's kind of, you know, they were kind of just feeling it. So I have them type it in. And I, I love the drag and drop feature because then half my syntax is, I don't have to fight syntax the same. You referenced an outline that you use to check their programming. Uh -huh. um, if you, I'm sure I received it, but the first time through, it really did not mean as much to me as it does this time. Where w is it, was it in an email or did you post yeah, it on the element email and it'll say three one one to three one six outline is usually what okay. I call it. Okay. I'll and just go back and find, find it. it. Just shoot me another email and I'll send it to you. Okay, and I did use your review this year and uh, this semester and it it made things for me so much easier in terms of just giving them some extra practice problems having them think through the questions as opposed to, you know, they need to apply it. So I'm hoping they do better this time. My PO scores, POE scores last time, they were okay, but they weren't that great. I'm hoping they're better this time. Yeah, well, they, are, they get better every time. Thank you all so much for everything you did for me and for all of us. Well, you bet, you bet. If you can't find that, just shoot me an email and I'll get you one. Okay. And the, my district is saying that the letter can come from one of you. It doesn't have to, if, it, if it'll just say that, you know, I was in this group and it was successfully was completed. I think that's all they want. But if you want something from PLTW, that's fine too. Yeah, let us talk to PLTW to see if they have something. And then okay. um, if not, Adam and I will compose we'll, a haiku we'll whip or something. something together, yeah. Haiku. <laughs> okay, that'd be good. I'd like to see that one. So thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Karen, I think you had posted, I have a question for Karen. I think you have posted your password for your uh, website. Uh, that was an email, right, because I logged into your right. website for a good a month and a half, and I can't remember what it was, because um, I want to download that review, because I like to spend Thursday and Friday of this week maybe um, giving a chance to work on that review. Yeah, yeah. Um, the... Um, the username is Stolman, capital S, T O H L M A N N, capital P, capital O, capital E. I teach under my maiden name, which is Stolman. Um, and then the username is Ohm's Law, V equals I R, all capitals, no spaces. Nerd. <laughs> yeah, I know, but they all get it. They all know it. By the time we get to electricity, they're like, ah, oh, V equals I R. Like, I know. Never use a password that doesn't help somebody be smarter. Um, I like that. That's yeah. good. So give that a shot. And if that doesn't okay, work, you. shoot me an email and I'll send that to you in writing. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much and have a great weekend. You too. Enjoy. Thanks, you too. Okay. Um, Hey, Adam, if I don't get that outline in a week, uh, I'll shoot you an email and ask uh, if you've gotten one. Make sure I just didn't miss some loop on it, because I would really like the scope and sequence, just so the gal I'm working with and I can sit down and remember when we used to get the scope and sequence and sit down and outline who was going to do what? That's no um, I'd like, <laughs> no, no, whatever. 